Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this Friday edition of Thoroughbred Action from beautiful Gulfstream Park. Jason Blewett catching up with you, and the best news of all, the show begins. we got a lot of ground to cover, 10 races on the program, so let's send it on up to Pete Aiello for more. We had some overnight rain here in South Florida, so the main track is good, but we're still on the turf, and the turf course rated firm. First of 10 on the program over the main track at seven furlongs. Claimers in for a price tag of 12,500. Field of seven, the seven ship disturber was heavily favored on the class drop. Racing at Gulfstream. From the outside, Coxon and Ship Disturber were well away. Chiseled has speed, moving out the rail. Here's Gentrify moving up. Gentrify and Chiseled, one, two, three wide, and Hornerman's on the attack. These three go hot and heavy. They've opened three on Orpheus, who's away racing in fourth. Then outside in Coxon, widest of all is Ship Disturber. The favorite is parked in the center of the course and about eight lengths off the leader. And then it's a gap with another four to Sandbrook Edge, who likes the pace up front. He's a big stretch runner, and he's last of all about 10 lengths off the lead. The lead is held by Gentrify in his second start since coming down from New York. He's at the half-mile mark with a length advantage. From the outside and chiseled from second, Hornerman third, Orpheus running on fourth. Coxon's still out in the center of the course. That's not doing any favors to Ship Disturber. Gaffleone's trying to get inside of him, but he had to wait to do it. He's now second last on the odds-on favorite, and the trailer is still Sandbrook Edge with 5 sixteenths to go. The leader is Gentrify to the quarter-mile pole, leads three parts of a length, chiseled. Back for more second, Orpheus in with an upset threat from third back to fourth and Horner Man. Ship Disturber just not firing. He's now last as they turn in. Orpheus got an inside lane as Gentrify drifted wide off the corner and Orpheus now takes charge and moves away two and a half. Chiseled gonna try to take another run second back to third and Gentrify. Orpheus is almost there and Jockey Miguel Vasquez continues in a zone. Orpheus wins at seven to one. Second Chiseled, third Gentrify and Coxon finish fourth. Upset winner to start the day, number five, Orpheus, kicks it into another gear under the red hot Miguel Vasquez for Rohan Crichton, who's also having a good week of racing here. Span Investments, the winning owner of this son of forestry. Number two, Chiseled, was second ahead of the one, Gentrify, who set the pace and had to settle for third. To the second race on turf at five furlongs, made in claimers of the $35,000 variety. This race starts the early pick four. Scratch number two, Spring Drama, Favorites included seven, Sugar, 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 and nine, Take a Stroll. And they're off. From between horses, Wanda Girl gets the first call. Take a Stroll has speed up on the outside. That's love for Avi away in the top flight. And Deer Island Diva makes it a party with Salsalita down toward the rail. Three back to Monterey Marianne, a gap of three more to Untruthful Sonnet. And no early speed from Sugar, Sugar, Sugar. She's last of all as they speed to the far turn. It's love for Avi and Abby Medina in front by a neck. Take a stroll is second. Wanda Girl is third. At the inside, Salsalita tries to improve. Going four wide on the outside is Monterey Marianne. She's gaining good ground for Jose Ortiz behind a 22 and one opening quarter. Trying to follow that move is Untruthful Sonnet and four to Sugar, Sugar, Sugar as they turn for the money. With the lead now, it's Take a Stroll who comes away with the lead now by a neck on the outside. Monterey Marianne, love for Avi, battles on Sugar, Sugar, Sugar behind a wall. Then Saul Salida and from between horses, Wanda Girl. They come to deep stretch. It's Take a Stroll and Luis Saez who still have the lead and Take a Stroll will win it. Monterey Marianne second. Wanda Girl wins the photo for third over Sugar, Sugar, Sugar in 59 flood. Number nine, Take a Stroll, broke through the front of the gate before the start of today's second race. That's usually not good news, but the daughter of Stroll had other ideas, and she puts her mind to business and takes care of business under Luis Saez, winning for Reeves Thoroughbred Racing and trainer Kathy Ritvo. Second, number one, Monterey Marianne, ahead of five, Wanda Girl, who ran third. Time for a commercial break. When we come back, we'll continue with Friday's action. Don't go away. The Pegasus World Cup Invitational is January 27th at Gulfstream Park, and that weekend we have something new, the Pegasus World Cup Betting Championship. I'm lucky to be joined enough by two guys who will be playing in this tournament, including... Ray Arsenault, defending NEC champion. And? Hi, Acacia. I'm Ross Gallo. I'm a 13-time NHC qualifier and also a member of the NTRA Players Committee. We're so excited for it. Join us here at Gulfstream Park. $500,000 expected pool. No entry fee if played on site. This is for the players. Back now for the third race of the afternoon at seven furlongs over the main track. Starter allowance optional claiming event with a field of eight. 
Off-time favorites included one Aztec Sense and six Flashy Jewel. And they're off. Good start for the Money Monster. Dream Saturday has speed from the rail. Aztec Sense is sent hard to get the front. And Aztec Sense exits to shoot with the lead and leads a length and a quarter. Dream Saturday is second on the outside. Flashy Jewel now moves up to take a joint second ahead of the Money Monster in fourth. Back at the inside, Joshua's comprised, sent along to try to keep pace early. Out wide, drink in my hand from between horses, Grand Nene. And Vencedor is last of all as they race to the half mile pole. Aztec Sense and Jaramillo committed for home now. They lead a length of a half over flashy jewel in second down inside dream saturday is third followed by the money monster and drink in my hand then back to grand nene about six lengths off the pace setter cyber josh is being out kicked or rather joshua's comprise is being out kicked and the trailer is vencedor as they round the far turn less than three eighths of a mile away aztec sense puts away flashy jewel and opens three on drink in my hand who's four wide and up into second the money monster is third dream saturday is back to fourth not firing flashy jewel then grand nene and vencedor and they're at the top of the stretch Aztec Sense trying to run him off their feet. He has a four-length lead. Up into second, drink in my hand. Then comes the Money Monster, a late run from Grand Nene and Vencedor. But this one's over. A tour de force from Aztec Sense and Amisael Jaramillo. They're kicking clear with authority. Aztec Sense all by himself. He wins by at least six. Drink in my hand was second. The Money Monster third. Grand Nene finished fourth. Number one, Aztec Sense simply runs them off their feet in today's third race, winning in gate-to-wire fashion while never seriously threatened. Misael Jaramillo rode the son of Street Sense to victory for Jorge Navarro and owner Joseph II. It's number five, Drink in My Hand, was second ahead of the seven, the Money Monster, who ran third. On now to race number four of the afternoon at about seven and a half furlongs over the turf. Claimers in for a price tag of $16,000. A field of nine. Race time favorite, the recent winner, number three, Feed Me Carrots. And they're off. Toward the inside, Bossiata gets the first call with Alex's party moving in the center, doing the Watusi three wide. Dana's ride's trying to get over. She'll be stuck about four wide as they hit the first turn run. From behind the speed, it's Feed Me Carrots, followed by Leroy's Mommy in Cunningham Creek. Be sure Lisa is second last in the early trailer, Swapple. Around the first turn they go. Bossiata has them stacked and packed a bit. She leads by a neck. Alex's party in the two-path second. Doing the Watusi is third. From the inside, Feed Me Carrots follows along fourth. Then it's Dana's ride. Leroy's mommy is next and at the rail, Cunningham Creek. Second last is Be Sure Lisa and Swap will get started. She's on a backstretch brush and she's now four wide as they head down the backstretch. The opening quarter was just 25 seconds flat. It's Bossiata on a long rein in front to half a length. Three wide out there and racing up into second is doing the Watusi with Alex's party between horses, then Dana's ride and Swapple. Leroy's mommy gets the shuffle with Feed Me Carrots at the inside. Cunningham Creek is second last, and now the trailer is Be Sure Lisa. That's the nine of them as they swing around the far turn, and the leader is still bossy out of Bionic. On the outside, doing the Watusi is still right at her throat latch second. Back to third and Swapple from the inside. Feed Me Carrots gets the green light. That's all for Dana's ride. Passed by Leroy's mommy, then Cunningham Creek. Alex's party's dropped anchor. Passed by B. Sure Lisa, and they run to the top of the stretch. We have a new leader, doing the Watusi has overhauled bossy out of, but it has to deal with Feed Me Carrots. Leroy's mommy punching between horses with an eighth of a mile to go. Feed Me Carrots. Carrot strides to a short lead, doing the Watusi. Tries to stay with her second. Leroy's mommy is third. Swapple is fourth, but they're coming to the wire. If you back the favorite, you can go to collect. It's Feed Me Carrots to win it on the wire by almost three. Doing the Watusi second. Third was Leroy's mommy, then Swapple and Cunningham Creek at 133 and one. Number three, Feed Me Carrots makes it two in a row over the Hallandale Beach sod as she gets the victory under Luis Saez, who gets his second winner of the day. This one for Jeremiah Engelhart and Gold Square MLC. Seven, doing the Watusi, fought on to get second ahead of the four, Leroy's mommy, who had to settle for third. To the fifth race now on the start of today's Rainbow Six. One mile over the main track, made in claimers, and for a price tag of 12,500. Scratch number seven, El Commendatore. All the money for three, Bannon, and four, Grand Fortress. And they're off. From the center, that's Grand Fortress who wins the break. Bull Roarer has speed, and Dazzling Pros comes away in good shape. These three across the course as they run out of the chute. Racing on from fourth, that's Cap Gun. Then they're followed by Bannon. Out wide on the course is Oliver Cash, and the trailer is HD Calculation. They exit the chute now and pass the six furlong point, and the leader is Bull Roarer and Edgar Zayas by a half a length. 
Grand Fortress on the outside, second. Backing off third was Dazzling Pros. Bannon moves up to take fourth ahead of Capgun, who's in tight fifth. Now he's about five lengths off the lead and three clear of Oliver Cash. The trailer is still HD calculation. They make their way to the half mile point. Bull Roarer comfortable with the length advantage over the favorite Grand Fortress in second. Dazzling Pros in the pink blinkers on the outside third for Alvin Jimenez. At the inside, Bannon is fourth. Cap Gun fifth and dropped better than six lengths off the pace. Two in front of Oliver Cash and HD calculation is last. The opening half mile was 47 and three. There's less than three furlongs to go. Up front, Bull Roarer leads narrowly. In second is Grand Fortress looking to get to the outside is Bannon from third. Dazzling Pros is fourth. Cap Gun is now five wide while fifth with a quarter of a mile left to go. Bannon's in the eclair and he's on the attack now after three quarters and 112 and four. Bannon just took the lead. Dazzling Pros is trying to get to him toward the inside. Bull Roarer not firing his best shot as Grand Fortress. He's trying to get a slice. Cap Gun over the top but Bannon kicks away it's Bannon in his second career outing on the major class drop he's eight to five and he's home safe Bannon in front dazzling pros is second this is going to get close for third it's going to be the favorite Grand Fortress holding third over cap gun then bull roarer at 139 and four number three Bannon responds to the class drop and wins easily giving Luis Saez his third winner of the afternoon this one for Todd Pletcher and Paul Pompa Jr. Four Grand Fortress had to settle for third as six Dazzling Froze continues to improve and he got second. Time for a commercial break. When we come back, turf sprinters and the late pick five don't go away. We have to take care of these horses that you know give us so much joy. Being accredited by the TAA gives us instant credibility. People trust us even more than they have before because they know that the TAA has been to all of our location and that our horses are well cared for. I mean, this farm wouldn't look the way it is. These horses wouldn't look the way they are if it wasn't for the generosity and the hard work of the and aftercare lines. They've united our whole industry in terms of the aftercare movement. We're all working together for the same purpose. On January 27th, the world's richest thoroughbred horse race returns. The Pegasus World Cup Invitation. 12 of the world's best horses compete for a record $16 million purse. It's an unforgettable entertainment experience you won't want to miss. At Gulfstream Park, one of Florida's premier entertainment destinations. Tickets on sale now at PegasusWorldCup.com. Back now for race number six on the program. Five furlongs on turf, the start of today's late pick five. Claiming price here was $16,000. Scratch number 12, Cyber Josh, a field of 11. Off-time favorites included five, two Exaharis, and seven, Diamond Mint. And they're off. Could not have broke any better. Diamond Mint away well. Zeus Odin toward the rail has speed. Cosmic Flash and Silver Chalice not far away. Butting away in the top flight. Stonehearts on the outside. Then from between horses goes two Exaharis. Cuckoo Saloon is at the rail. Widest of all is Grand Junior with Guatemala City. Then it's back to the outside and Guatemala City who's now six off the lead and seven clear of Lone Trader who's not keeping up. Around the far turn they go. Zeus Odin pressed along by Super Bomb. Cosmic Flash on the outside. They work two lengths ahead of third running Diamond Mint. Butting run on from fourth. Stoneheart is now fifth around Silver Chalice, then two Exaharis as they run to the top of the stretch. Zeus Odin and Cosmic Flash continue to tussle from the back. Budding put into the clear in his South Florida return, ducking to the inside. Diamond Mint late run from two Exaharis on the far outside in Grand Junior. Stoneheart still right there. Many chances here as they come past the eighth pole. The leader is Budding. Here's two Exaharis on the outside. Budding and two Exaharis. Budding still there. Two Exaharis one more time. It's Budding in front. Budding beat two Exaharis with Diamond Mint and Stoneheart in 58 flat. Number eight, Budding springs a 13 to one surprise in his South Florida return under jockey Tyler Gaffleone, who handled the son of spring at last to victory for Howard Walton and John Mateen. Toronto Invaders continue to do good work. Second five, two Exaharis is set of number seven, Diamond Mint, who ran third. To the seventh race in the first leg of the late pick four, made in claimers at one mile over the main track. Price tag here, 12500 A field of nine, favorites included one, Dino Dude, and five, Sumner. And they're up. 
Cowtown Duke away well, so was Dino Dude. Sumner away in good shape. And from the center, here's Some Dreams Come True moving up. Some Dream Come True will land in front, and he'll cross over ahead of Sumner with Dino Dude moving out the rail. Out wide on the course is Private Bellamy, far outside, and that's looking over us. Then from between horses, Sumner, back to Stoneheart Park, ahead of Cowtown Duke and Loving Ard Samard, and the trailer is Home Power. Down the back stretch they go, and the three favorites are one, two, three, with all... Uh, leaders for some dreams come true. Three parts, now a length in front of second running Dino Dude. Sumner is third. From fourth and outside, Private Bellamy. Moving up to be fifth is Lemming Rard Samard. Then comes a retreating Stoneheart Park. Cowtown Dude and Home Tower are next, and the trailer is looking over us with little more than half a mile to go. They swing to the far turn. The opening half mile was fast, 46 and four. Around the far turn they go. The advantage to some dreams come true by a length. Sumner trying to move up from second, from third, Dino Dude on the outside, and Private Bellamy throwing his hat into the ring at a nice price with five sixteenths to go. Sumner now bids up to take the lead, but over his shoulder, here comes Private Bellamy on the attack now at the quarter mile pole. Sias just took a look over his shoulder and sees he needs to give Sumner some more rain. So so he does, and Sumner willingly takes the lead. It's now Sumner looking to put him away at the top of the stretch. After three quarters in 112 flat, Sumner has the lead. Private Bellamy is up into second from Some Dreams Come True third. Dino Dude back to fourth, but here's another Pletcher winner. Here's Sumner on the drop in class. He's much the best. Sumner going away. Private Bellamy second. Some Dreams Come True third. Dino Dude ran fourth. Number five, Sumner, is another horse from the Todd Pletcher Shed Row who responds to a drop in class and wins in his second career outing. He gives Luis Saez his fourth winner of the day. Son of Union Rags proves too much for the seventh race field. Starlight Racing, the winning owners, and again, Todd Pletcher gets his second winner today. To the eighth race on turf at one mile, starter allowance optional claiming event. Scratch the two, Plain Air, scratch the five, Magali, and scratch the 12, Devilish Romance. Field of nine. Off-time favorites included number three, Ultimate Cause, and number nine, Love and Empire. And they're off. From the center, One Direction Song gets the first call. Moving up toward the rail, Blame It On Dixie has some speed. She's going to try to keep her inside position and head off the affair, uh, early minded uh, One Direction Song. So One Direction Song has the lead. She's now going to be able to try, drop over ahead of Blame It On Dixie, who races from second. Havana Affair is third. Down at the inside, it's Ultimate Cause, who follows along in fourth. Followed fifth in mid-flight there by OKK with Indy Gitta and the drawing away silks down toward the rail. Then it's a length and a half back to the team of Raining Lemons and Clyde's Queen and Love and Empire is the early trailer as they head into the backstretch. One Direction Song leads the way by a half a length off the fence. Blame it on Dixie is second. Moving up into take third now is Ultimate Cause. Only two lengths off the lead on her outside. And only also only two lengths off the lead is Havana Affair. She's been a bit wide, though. Then back to OKK and Indy Gita. Three wide out there and improving a bit is Clyde's Queen ahead of Raining Lemons. And still trailing is the stretch running Love and Empire. Separated by seven lengths in the run to the far turn. One Direction Song into the front by a half a length in front through a 50 and flat half mile after a 20 four and four opening quarter. On the outside and taking over third is Havana Fair Ultimate Cause. Still has horse, no place to go yet. OKK gets started. She's now moving into contention. Three lengths off the lead. Then Raining Lemons and Indy get at the back is Love and Empire and Clyde's Queen as they run for home. Up front, One Direction Song inhaled by Blame It On Dixie. On the outside and Havana Affair looking for racing room and finding it along the rail is Ultimate Cause. Now she just angled back outside as One Direction Song fending up all the challenges. Clyde's Queen over the top. They're lining up and swarming in. It's it's Clyde's Queen, Raining Lemons, these two. Clyde's Queen up to win it under Jose Bautista from Raining Lemons second, then OKK, Love and Empire, and One Direction Song. 22 to 1 bomber to start the late pick three is number eight, Clyde's Queen. Drops back to last, turning for home, tips into the clear, and runs down the entire field under Jose Bautista for trainer Tom Bush and Sulamar Stable. 10, Raining Lemons had a good effort for second, ahead of six, OKK, who ran third. Time for another commercial break. When we come back, a good one. The Friday feature, sprinting on the main track. Don't go away. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm, from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. 
back now for race number nine on the program. Six furlongs over the main track. Allowance optional claiming event that was the Friday feature. A field of eight signed on. A lot of chances in this race. The favorites included the one, Abounding Legacy, and the six, Delta Bluesman. And they're off. Excellent beginning for the veteran Delta Blues man. He's going to try to cross and clear, and he's sent to do it, and he will. Delta Blues man clears off. Abounding Legacy is second on the outside. Eklos comes away in third. Diddley out of there fourth. Then back to Unbridled Outlaw, who's two in front of Tiger Blood. Minute Madness is second last, and Sunshine and Shadow is last as they speed to the half-mile point. Edgar Zayas comes off the fence with Abounding Legacy, trying to press the issue with Delta Blues man, who's up front. Unbridled Outlaw is now third from the outside. Eklos is fourth. Diddley is fifth. Minute Madness improves at the inside from Masonette, two in front of Tiger Blood, and still nothing from Sunshine and Shadow. Past the 5 16 Irat Ortiz Jr. lets out a notch on Delta Blues Man. He still has the lead. On the outside, a bounding legacy is scrubbed on on Bridled Outlaw. Throws his hat into the ring. He's now looking for racing room, and they're at the top of the stretch. It's Delta Blues Man who turns first with the advantage on Bridled Outlaw. Still trying to find some place to go. A bounding legacy is next with an eighth of a mile to go. It's still Delta Blues Man in front. On Bridled Outlaw secures rail running, and then a bounding legacy. Sunshine and Shadows on late, but through it all, Delta Blues Man proves too much. He wins by two. Unbrowded Outlaw was second. Abounding Legacy holds off Sunshine and Shadow for third. Minute Madness to complete the high five and one ten and two. Favorite takes care of business to start the late daily double as the veteran Delta Blues man brings his A game. Takes the field all the way under jockey Irat Ortiz Jr., trainer Jorge Navarro, and owners Al and Michelle Crawford. Number five Unbrowded Outlaw fired but was second best ahead of the one Abounding Legacy who had to settle for third. Tenth and final race over the turf at about seven and a half furlongs. Scratch the eight and 14. A field of 12. And this was a wide open betting race. And runners away. Slow to begin was Capo Del Capi. Quick to begin was Kid McCool, who moves right to the early lead from Dreaming of Jojo, who moves up to be second down at the inside. That's Ere Ere, who comes away in the top flight. He's third and down toward the rail. Out wide is Elk Camp, and sandwiched between horses is Bakelite. That's a length and a half back to the fence, and Cabin John, he's mid-flight and five lengths off the lead. Following him are both Masquerader and KK's Revolver, who's dropped over from the high draw, racing ahead of Rocky Strange. Then it's Rough Note, a gap of a length and a half to Capi Del Capi, and the trailer is He's true brew they roll into the back stretch now through the opening quarter mile in 24 seconds flat kid mccool leads the way a half a length dreaming of jojo second out camp third and a is parked at the rail in fourth ahead of bakelite fifth cabin john is a three wide six kk's revolver is seventh eighth and down toward the inside is masquerader racing in ninth is rocky strange tenth and improving is capo del capi rough note is 11th and 12th and last the trailer is he's true brew they leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn 49 and four for the half mile. Three wide. Elk Camp goes on the attack. Kid McCool holds a narrow lead. Dreaming of JoJo is next. Cabin John and Rocky Strange four and five wide and starting to get to the leader. Cabin John far outside. He just took, took a head in front. Elk Camp goes with him trying to run on with them as Rocky Strange. Down inside it's Ere Ere. Bakelite did not go on and they're at the top of the stretch. Cabin John and Elk Camp. These two quick it up. They've opened two now on Ere Ere who rallies with Kid McCool and Rocky Strange. On the inside and Elk Camp fighting to hold it and he has something in the tank here. Cabin John is fully stretched and not gaining. Rocky Strange is third. Here's Plutcher and Johnny V. Here's Elk Camp to win it. Rocky Strange gets second. Cabin John third. Then Ere Ere and Masquerader to complete your high five and 134 flat. Todd Pletcher continues to have a very good meeting here at Goldstream Park, but he usually does. That's no surprise. Elk Camp gives him his third winner of the day. John Velasquez rode this one for Harold Ventures. Again, Todd Pletcher, your winning trainer. It was number four, Rocky Strange, who picked up good ground to get second ahead of the one, Cabin John, who ran third. Plenty of winners in today's Rainbow Six, which triggers a carryover going into tomorrow's card of more than $1.8 million. And that's it, another Friday in the books. Keep in mind, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend getting underway with Saturday's 12-race card. A couple of graded stakes in the mix, and do note we're running here on Monday for the holiday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. 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 Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you.
tell you, Jack, I'm so tired. 